Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and where we'll discuss watercolor uh, painting process and uh, provide narrative watercolor tutorials. This is second part of a three part series and uh, if you haven't seen the part one, please do uh, watch the part one of the part one where we have developed this sketch. Okay, So we will be developing this sketch further onto a bigger size sketchbook wherein I will be trying to make a pen sketch and then we'll do a, a, a watercolor wash on top of it right so uh, if you if you have any questions on this approach on the materials and all uh, you can please let me know i will i will share the information i'm using any normal sketchbook will do but if you have, if you want to particularly know the, about uh, the details about the materials that i'm using i will try to in include that into the description list below right so let us now take a bigger sketchbook which is here and uh, let us copy this into this since uh, this uh, sketchbook is likely to buckle a bit because of uh, the it is not a it is not ideally suitable for uh, watercolors I mean, it, you can do watercolors of with the limited layers on this kind of sketchbooks but it is not the ideal watercolor paper that everybody uses for watercolors so since it is, there is a good chance of uh, buckling, I am tapping the paper uh, so that we can get rid of some of the buckling. Okay. So this is a normal uh, masking tape. Right, the, the sketchbook is taped on all the four sides and uh, let us now make a pen drawing. So I am using uh, a normal uh, waterproof uh, gel pen. Uh, that uh, we get in Indian market so you may use any water uh, waterproof uh, uh, pen for dry making this drawing so this is not very expensive this is very cheap uh, quality pen uh, cheap in, in terms of price but it works good for the uh, ink and wash right so let us make a quick drawing and I will not give the tonal details and all so let us make okay somewhere around this area I will I will make this house okay. it may not be precisely in the same way but you I, I might make some minor changes This is very rough drawing. Okay, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, my drawings are usually a little rough. Okay, usually my drawings are little rough. So I think that's okay. And the other one is. I think it should go a little above. And at this point, we will make all these foliages and the base of the house can be somewhere around this and lot of foliage around this area and a couple of things maybe a figure here okay. and some kind of foliages here it is again very rough okay a lot of foliage some foreign foliage here okay. and maybe this is having some shadow like this and uh, maybe some windows here 
the door and as we know couple of foliage is here and yeah I think we can make more figures here more figure and there could be more steps here I don't know what these are A lot of some shadows here yeah I think we will keep it at this point and there is maybe there is a Electric pole here. I'm making rough drawing. It is not precise drawing, so please uh, don't worry too much. So the other electric poles are somewhere behind. Okay. All right. So let us start with the watercolors and we'll do some washes and some very rough watercolors we'll make out of it so let us pick the colors now let us start the sky with some cobalt blue okay maybe a touch of red to make it little slightly a color variation okay. as I told I have used the uh, uh, waterproof waterproof ink gel pen for the drawing okay I have used uh, a waterproof uh, gel pen for the drawing and uh, taped all the four edges so that uh, we don't have any buckling okay. uh, Now let us make some some of these foreign foliages. Again, I'm using a little bit of uh, cobalt blue and maybe a touch of uh, maybe a touch of uh, brown burnt sienna and cobalt blue. Okay, and let us make this uh, the the fo the foliage is at the back it's still wet so i'm leaving it to merge okay so some of these things are actually merging okay this is kind of uh, probably the background and there will be something in here also I'm using a big mop brush and uh, I may not have good control but I'm happy with whatever control I am getting and uh, because uh, it's it's a sketch after all it, after all it is a sketch so any any bleeding and other things happening I'm, I'm not too much worried okay and maybe at this point I'll make some uh, green warm green sort of a land uh, around this so let us make a little bit of uh, cadmium yellow type color okay. little bit of uh, greenish yellow a greenish yellow because I picked up cadmium uh, orange a uh, cadmium yellow but my brush already had some uh, blue in it so it is creating some yellowish tone mixing some orange so that I get some color variation okay. I don't want this to be very very precise color okay. this is just a 
just an idea maybe i will use some olive green for this olive green and some yellow color and make some land here little thicker olive green maybe a touch of burnt sienna very almost dry color Maybe I'll sprinkle some droplets of water. Okay, that will create some texture. I think we are pretty much done with uh, the initial coat. And uh, what we will do now is we need little darker color for the nearby trees and more details for the the house okay so we'll do that in the next stage right so let it be slightly dry because i don't want this area to be wet because uh, i want some contrast on the roof so i want this area to be dry but probably we can attack this area and we can fill this area this part of it I am going to a synthetic round brush now and let us now make uh, I'm taking a little bit of uh, yellow ochre color yellow ochre very pale pale yellow ochre maybe there is some burnt sienna so I might mix with some burnt sienna and uh, a warmer color wall for this particular house okay. and I wanted some kind of a texture here I don't want pure single color for this maybe some contrast and little darker color as it comes to the, the bottom is falling down this will help creating some sort of a texture for the for the house okay. now this is somewhat dry so let us let us go for a rope color which is just yellow I am putting just a orange orange color color I'm not really worried about the wall part of it and maybe I'm picking some violet and adding some violet color also somewhere so that it is not purely uh, an orange color and there is some color variation also And for the wall, I will be probably I will be using more more color going forward. Once it is dry, I will use more darker color for the wall because I want this wall to be in different color. And now I think we can do this foliage. And for that, uh, maybe we need some. We are taking some cobalt blue. We are taking cobalt blue and cobalt blue and uh, maybe some sap green. My, my colors are little bit dried and chalky but since it's a sketch I am just taking it. Little bit bluish green and let us all make this kind of
I think this is fine. I wanted to make it little bit protruding this side so that it looks little bit more interesting. I think we'll we'll finish it like this maybe some water some texture here right. now little bit of uh, uh, the a similar color here maybe slightly darker color so I'll use more of olive green and slightly thicker version of this blue and olive green and I think we are we are pretty much done with that and now we need some shadows for this let us make some shadow so I'm using some violet I'm mixing to this I'm I'm mixing little bit of violet color to this whatever bluish green we have made and let us make this shadow This is an slanted land, so we are getting a shadow like this. And there is another piece of shadow but here also because this area is again in shadow. This will have a larger shadow. I think uh, that much is sufficient. Now let us give some details for the house. Okay. I wanted this wall should be little darker, so I'm using some uh, vermilion vermilion red for this wall. Okay. Maybe some color variation with orange. Okay. And we need darker color for these shadows. So let me take a strong shadow color, a strong dark color. I'm using Prussian blue and maybe a little bit of crimson lake Prussian blue and crimson lake Prussian blue and crimson lake and let us go for this shadow uh, ideally we should use a little smaller brush I'm using a smaller brush for this to get some more control on this
and some shadows casting on the wall okay. I'm using a little warmer color for this shadow I know that uh, some of the colors will merge here so I'm, I, I'm allowing to that to happen some of these uh, darker color above will create will merge to this of shadow here see this is from imagination so we really do not know how the shadows are going to happen but let us make some assumption okay okay I think now what we need is some shadows for this roof under under roof also With this we are pretty much done with the the bigger shapes and now we need smaller shapes I'm using a little bit of burnt sienna to burnt sienna and maybe compression blue and making this windows color variation some shadow color for this also let us make some kind of shadow here also so that it all makes sense some some marks it doesn't look good with flat colors so some marks here and there yeah. right now what we need is Really, we, we, what we need is uh, giving some final touches to the figures and some of these doors and windows. Some dark tones for this. darker stuff yeah I think we are pretty much done okay. I don't know what what is this so let us leave that one and now what we need is some suggestion for the tiles I think that is done now the final part let us make some color for the figures okay. and 
maybe it's a good idea to go for different colors for different figures little bit of a purplish color for this a red color for him shadows some uh, thick orange color to the face okay. and yeah maybe maybe there is another guy here not a good idea to just uh, have everyone uh, equally apart so let us make some some more people here so there are too many figures which i am not very happy pure white touch directly from the tube yeah i think that's it so we are done with the the watercolor sketch and uh, I, let us now take out the tape okay so this is the final outcome and i am pretty happy with uh, the way it came out the color vibrancy and the overall composition i am pretty happy and if you have any questions or queries uh, please do let me know and uh, if you think this uh, can help uh, others uh, who are learning watercolors please consider sharing this to your friends or uh, watercolor aspirants and uh, any questions, please do uh, put them in the comment box. I'll surely find time and reply.